Ed joins the great ranging beyond the wall led by Lord Commander Jaw Mormont. As the Night's Watch arrives at Craster's Keep in the haunted forest, Ed watches Samuel Tarly and Gren bickering. Ed approaches Jon Snow, who observes the fortified homestead, and Dead pans that he was born in a similar place but that he has now fallen on hard times. Sam, and later Gren, join the pair and note the women working around the hall. Ed warns not to speak to them. Gren wonders if Craster, the master of the hall, doesn't like people speaking to his daughters. Ed answers that they are also his wives because Craster marries his daughters and breeds more daughters with them. Sam and Gren state the disgust and Ed counters that while all the other wildlings in the area have disappeared, Craster is still present, so he must be doing something right. Sam, Ed, and Gren are peeling potatoes outside Craster's keep. Ed says that if the gods wanted people to have dignity they would not have made them fart when they died. Gren is incredulous, and Ed tells him the story of his mother's death. He claims that he held her hand as she passed and that she farted long and hard, then making a farting noise to underscore his assertion. Sam notices Gilly, and observes that it is greedy for Craster to have so many wives. Ed dead pans that they were having a serious discussion. Gren and Sam and continue their conversation, with Gren telling Sam of his relationship with a girl named Violet. Ed interrupts again and sends Sam for more vegetables. Having left Craster's keep and the haunted forest, the ranging approaches the fist of the first men to meet with Corin, a living legend in the Night's Watch, who is considered to be one of their best rangers. Ed hears Sam commenting on the beauty of the place and that Gilly would love it there. Ed comments to Gren that there is nothing more sickening than a man in love. The watch reach the summit of the fist and set up camp. Ed begs Sam to shut up as he comments on the history of the ancient place. After Sam wonders what the first men were like, Ed answers they must have been stupid, as smart people wouldn't find themselves in places like the Fist. John suggests that their distant ancestors were afraid and came to the Fist to escape something but doesn't believe that it worked. A horn sounds, causing all men to stop their activities. John watches a column of men approaching before saying that a single blast is for rangers returning while two blasts are for wildlings. Ed notes the moment after one blast standing and waiting, wondering if a second blast will come and repeats that one blast is for friends and two for foes. Sam adds that three blasts are used to signal white walkers. John, Gren, and Ed turns to look at him and he explains that it has been a thousand years since it was last done. Gren asks how Sam knows if so much time has passed. Ed and Gren interrupt and, sarcastically, finish Sam's answer before he can say he read it in a book. Gren walks away while Ed stops when John announces it's the half-hand approaching. Ed says that they will live another day, punctuating his monotone with a sarcastic, hurrah. Ed is close to John as Corin confirms to Lord Commander Mormont that Mance Raider has gathered a massive host and reports lookouts in the Skirling Pass. He takes a small party of scouts ahead to surprise the lookouts. John is among them. Some time later, Ed, Gren, and Sam talk while digging latrines and discuss the possibility that John, the half-hand, and the others' rangers might be dead. Gren discovers a stone tablet marked with runes of the first men. Ed keeps digging and tells him to leave it alone but he lifts it anyway. Beneath it is a cache of weapons, mostly spearheads, as well a horn, all wrapped in a knight's watch cloak. Sam identifies them as being made of dragon glass. Nearby the base of the fist, Ed gathers frozen feces to burn for fire alongside Gren and Sam. He's annoyed when Sam begins to talk about Gilly and snarks that Sam finds her interesting just because she spoke to him. Sam counters that what he finds interesting about Ed is absolutely nothing. Their banter is interrupted by a horn blast. Sam wonders if the half-hand has returned and a second horn blast is heard. Gren draws his sword and Ed tells them to return to the fist so as not to fight the wildlings alone. A third blast sounds, prompting Ed to scream at his sworn brothers to run. Gren and Ed quickly make it back to the fist, seemingly not noticing they have left Sam behind. A massive horde of whites, led by white walkers, approach the fist. 